I want to finish up our discussion on electrolytic cells by focusing on one thing you will always see in an electrolytic cell and one thing you will never see. The first is the salt bridge. You will never see a salt bridge in an electrolytic cell. The reason being that we have no desire to prevent the buildup of charge. We don't need to allow the flow of ions from one side to another uh, because we're actually trying to generate the buildup of charge. With the second thing, which is something you will always see in an electrolytic cell, and that is a power source. We're using a battery or an electrical outlet to force electrons onto the cathode faster than they can be taken off. We want to create a negative charge at that electrode. We want the buildup of electrons there. We're actually incorporating a power source to force that to happen so that one of two things will take place as a result. Either electroplating where metal ions are pulled out of solution because they're attracted to that buildup of electrons or electrolysis where molecules can be split like water molecules um, being split into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas so remember that when you're looking at an electrolytic cell picture diagram you're reading about it in a word problem you will never see you will never encounter a salt bridge and you will always find a power source now in order to compare and contrast the two types of electrochemical cells I actually want to move down to the bottom of this table first. I really should have flipped this thing. And, and I want to focus on the bottom three things that all go hand in hand. And if we can understand these, then we'll understand, we'll have a better chance of understanding the top three. First is the direction of electron flow. This is something that happens to be a similarity. Okay, and remember, this is compare and contrast. So the direction of electron flow is one thing that is similar between these two types of cells. We said from the very beginning, electrons always flow from the anode to the cathode. It doesn't matter what type of electrochemical cell we have. Because that's the case, and electrons are always going to the cathode, and remember, actually, we said they're going through the cathode, but in the case of the electrolytic cell, they really are going to it uh, for a while. They're staying there for a while, and that's why a charge builds up. But either way, since electrons go to the cathode, that's the half cell where reduction always occurs. Remember, we said before, red cat has no exceptions. We also said if red cat has no exceptions, and ox, that the anode is the site where oxidation occurs, or the half cell where oxidation occurs, that always has to be the case. Now, since we know these three similarities between the two types of cells, it's time to look at the differences. And the biggest thing, uh, if, if the electrons always flowing from the anode to the cathode is the biggest similarity, and it explains uh, why the reduction half cell is always the cathode, why the oxidation half cell is always the anode, the reason the electrons flow from the anode to the cathode is the key to understanding the difference between these two types of cells. And the fact is, That flow of electrons in a galvanic or voltaic cell is spontaneous. But in an electrolytic cell, it's forced. Since electrons spontaneously flow to the cathode in a galvanic cell, that means it must be positive because electrodes are neg or, I'm sorry, electrons are negative. And if a negative particle is attracted to the cathode, the cathode must be positive. Since the electrons are forced to the cathode in an electrolytic cell, 
that means we are making the cathode negative. We're forcing billions of electrons onto the cathode per second faster than the ions in solution or the molecules can take them off. We're doing that. We're sending electrons there. They're not being attracted to the cathode spontaneously. They're being forced onto it. So it's the negative electrode. Uh, well, the only remaining electrode, since the anode is the source and supplier and spontaneously provides negative electrons, it's the negative electrode in a galvanic cell. Since we are taking electrons away from the anode in an electrolytic cell, we are making it the positive electrode. So it's important first to understand the direction of flow and that it always goes from anode to cathode. And, and that, that helps you understand the similarities. One, two, three down at the bottom. If you can understand those and then just remember that in the galvanic cell, that flow is spontaneous, that sort of tells you the rest of the story with why the anode is positive in one case and negative in the other, and the same for the cathode. Now looking uh, toward the bottom, the last thing I have for you, a little animation on hydrogen fuel cells. I'm going to kind of leave this to you. It's great, really innovative. It's kind of neat just seeing how technology, how far technology's come, how much, how similar this is in some ways to a car battery that you have now um, that involves the lead and sulfuric acid because they both these both types involve redox reactions but these new hydrogen fuel cells that are be, being used in hybrid cars um, they use a different kind or a different just different um, species in their oxidation reduction reaction much less dangerous and hopefully someday uh, can provide even more efficient and clean burning fuel